Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Isaias Iniguez, and I am the Senior Program Coordinator of Workforce Development at the California Primary Care Association, also known as CPCA. I'm also joined by Anne-Marie Flattery, who is a Survey Manager at Gallagher Research and Insights. Thank you for joining us, Anne-Marie. Thank you, Isa. Our goal for today's webcast is to, one, walk you through key survey findings that we captured through CPCA's 2020 COVID-19 Workforce Pulse Survey, as well as our 2019 Workforce Survey, which, per, which both provide a window into workforce disruptions, strategies that health centers have used in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. These results will also provide insight on clinical education slash training and leadership development interests as reported by health centers. We will share how the results can serve as a strategic management tool for your teams to help inform and drive workforce decision making. And we will conclude with additional information on how to access the reports as well as additional CPCA resources made available through CPCA's website. So just to start off, we recognize that current the current COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted the workforce of health centers. Through HRSA's weekly Community Health Center COVID-19 Impact Survey for health center grantees and lookalike organizations, we learned that 45% of California community health centers temporarily closed at least one of their sites. One in seven staff are unable to work due to a variety of reasons, including lack of PPE, home obligations, as well as site closures. Health centers also reported that there's been a halt in clinical internship and training programs. Some health centers have had to re retrain as well as repurpose existing staff, all while learning how to comply with recent federal and state legislation, such as the Families First Corona Response Act. HRSA, the data that HRSA provides CPCA gives us a high-level overview of COVID-19 disruptions. However, our team wanted to dive deeper into these disruptions and partnered with Gallagher Surveys to disseminate a 2020 COVID-19 Workforce Pulse Survey. Doing so helped not only CPCA understand the nuances caused by these disruptions, but also will provide health centers with a strategic management tool that could be leveraged to help with workforce decision-making. With this, I will hand it over to my colleague, Anne-Marie, who will share more information on the background and the methodology of the survey. So, Anne-Marie. Thank you, Isa. Since 2015, Gallagher has been conducting the annual compensation and benefits survey on behalf of CPCA. Last year, a separate workforce development survey was created, which serves as a companion report to the compensation and benefits survey and provides detailed information on how California Community Health Center's workforce is being recruited, retained, utilized, and trained. The survey also captures data that will assist CPCA to better understand workforce challenges in the state, guide program and technical assistance efforts offered through the association, and identify any needed advocacy efforts at both the state and national level. While the 2019 Workforce Development Survey report was being finalized in early 2020, COVID-19 became a global pandemic, causing major business disruptions and required many community health centers to develop or adapt their HR strategies. As a result, CPCA created the 2020 COVID-19 Workforce Pulse Survey with the goal of capturing how CHC workforce priorities challenges and strategies may have shifted as a result of the pandemic. All CPCA members were invited to participate in both surveys. Data from 77 participating community health centers are included in the 2019 Workforce Development Survey, and data from 96 community health centers are included in the 2020 COVID-19 Workforce Pulse Survey. Both surveys were conducted online and the questionnaires were developed, reviewed, and approved by CPCA staff. Survey participation in the 2019 Workforce Development Survey ran from September to October 2019. Participation in the COVID-19 Workforce Pulse Survey ran from June 3rd through June 12th, 2020. The data was verified and the final results were aggregated by Gallagher, an independent consultant. The report was compiled in December 2019 
updated in June 2020 and finalized in June 2020. All Gallagher surveys fully comply with the U.S. Department of Justice and Federal Trade Commission guidelines on conducting salary surveys. Peer organizations are not allowed to share unaggregated salary and benefits information with each other. Properly conducted surveys are allowable for benchmarking. The guidelines for salary surveys are that all reported data must be aggregated, there should be at least five organizations reporting for each data point, no one organization can represent more than 25% of a weighted statistic, and the survey must be compiled by a third party. While this survey doesn't specifically capture compensation data, adhering to these guidelines helps to ensure participant confidentiality and boost the statistical validity of the data. And with that, I'll hand it back over to Isa. All right. So thank you, Anne-Marie. We recognize that when we are past this pandemic, the same challenges that existed before, especially those related to primary care and behavioral health workforce, will still be there. In fact, they will likely be exacerbated. So in other words, prior workforce challenges have not gone away. So as health centers begin to ramp up their teams and transition through Governor Newsom's reopening, we wanted to capture how health centers are adapting and provide you with a window into the, clin the clinical workforce challenge health centers reported while participating in our surveys. The following slides will reflect data that helps unpack the workforce disruptions mentioned earlier. 82% uh, of respondents reported that they repurposed staff in response to COVID-19. Meanwhile, 18% did not repurpose any staff. Medical assistants, dental assistants, and administrative assistants were among the top staff positions that were repurposed. Included in the report, we provide a breakdown of all the positions that health centers repurposed, as well as a variety of roles and functions repurposed staff played during the pandemic. Through our Pulse survey, we learned that a growing number of community health centers had to make reductions to their staff. Meanwhile, their recruitment efforts also took a pause. Others had to modify their operating hours, such as shortening their work weeks. Some have focused their staff well be on well-being, engagement, and retention and some have had to even revisit their compensation structures and variable pay. We will go into these additional details in upcoming slides. Recognizing the COVID-19 disruptions to the workforce, health centers were asked to identify their top clinical workforce challenges beyond acquiring testing supplies. When we averaged the responses by all community health centers in California, the top challenges identified were managing provider schedules, reinstating furloughed or laid off employees and cross training slash repurposing clinical staff. Both of these tied for third place. This was followed by redesigning workforce teams or community outreach and education programs. And finally, searching for multicultural and multilingual experience candidates, as well as cost of living, which both received a 37%. The detailed report included in our analysis provides an expanded view of the above data that's packaged by operating budget and FTE. You'll notice that the order of these challenges will actually vary depending on both factors. As part of our 2019 workforce development survey, we asked health centers to provide information on the challenges they were experiencing to sustain or expand their current physician residency programs or partnerships. The top three challenges were recruiting or retaining faculty, securing funds to sustain or expand residency training, sustaining and or establishing new partnerships with training institutions. While the 2019 Workforce Development Survey report was being finalized, in early 2020, COVID-19 became a global pandemic, causing major business disruptions and requiring many community health centers to develop or even modify their HR strategies. We recognize that community health center workforce priorities have shifted, and so we wanted to capture those key points to understand where we as an association could help. We also wanted to capture what incentives and training efforts were being leveraged to strengthen retention so that health centers could learn how other similarly sized health centers were moving forward. 
The current slide illustrates comparisons of the top five workforce priorities identified by both reports. To no surprise, the top results captured through both surveys reflect a shift in workforce priorities. You'll see on the right hand of the screen that health centers named enhancing your organization's culture to boost employee morale, retention, and productivity as their top priority in 2019. This was followed by recruiting providers, enhancing productivity, developing effective recruitment strategies to reduce provider turnover, and establishing a formal onboarding process. With the pandemic in motion, health centers named restructuring workplace and or workforce schedules to mitigate risk as their top priority. This was then followed by developing, updating their return to work plans, enhancing productivity, strengthening employees' mental well-being and safety to reduce psychological distress and anxiety, and enhancing the organization's culture to, to boost employee morale. The detailed report provides an expanded view of the Pulse survey packaged by operating budget and FTE as well. You'll notice that the order of these challenges will vary, these priorities, excuse me, will also vary depending on the health center's operating budget or their FTE. We recognize that changes in pay are only one factor that influence a candidate's decision to seek a new employer or even stay with their existing health center. We also recognize that health centers come in different shapes and sizes and operate with different budgets. Therefore, we asked health centers to identify additional benefits and perks they leveraged for recruitment and retention purposes. Pre-COVID, we learned that a majority provide some form of variable pay. When we aggregate all community health center responses, the top five strategies were, one, funding for con uh, continuing education, two, offering flexible schedules or part-time options to their clinical staff, three, staff recognition awards, also known as employee appreciation awards. Four, over 50% of the health centers actually offered some type of financial incentives, such as bonuses. And lastly, five, uh, retention awards that are tied to some form of tenure. With COVID-19 coming into the picture, more than half of community health centers offer part-time flexible schedules. This was then followed by staff recognition and employee appreciation awards, mental health wellness resources and our trainings, expanded flexibility with PTO, vacation time, holiday pay, and finally offering a form of catastrophic COVID-19 leave pay, either offered through state or FFCRA, known as the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. As mentioned, these are all results when we average the responses from all community health centers in California that participated in the surveys. As you can imagine, the retention strategies that are leveraged by a health center will also vary by operating budget and FTE size. So we encourage health centers to review the report given that all retention strategies identified in the survey that go beyond these top five are also included in the detailed report and are broken down by operating budget and FTE. We hope that having such data will allow you to identify how other similarly sized health centers are retaining their staff, but more importantly, provide you with a data set that gives you a window into how to stay competitive. The table above displays data from 51 health centers who provided health professions training that completed both surveys. To no surprise, the amount of training health centers offer to clinical students decreased in primary care, behavioral health, oral health, pharmacy, and allied health. The report provides an expanded view of the above data, which is also broken down by health professions, student versus residents, as well as the specialty. Health centers are committed to caring for their patients and serving as resources for their communities while also maintaining the health and well-being of their staff. Through our surveys, we recognize that changes in pay are only one factor that influence a candidate's decision to stay. Therefore, we asked health centers to identify additional benefits and perks they leveraged for recruitment and retention purposes. The top incentives beyond compensation and benefits health center reported that they will offer to strengthen clinical re recruitment and retention are one, part-time flexible schedules, two, staff recognition employee appreciation awards, 
Three, funding for continuing education. Four, retention awards for staff who remain within the clinic for several years. And five, financial incentives such as bonuses or even hazard pay. As mentioned, health centers come in different si shapes and sizes and operate with different budgets. So we're really encouraging health centers to look at the detailed report given that these strategies are also going to be broken down by FTE and budget size. Having such data will allow you to identify how other similarly sized health centers are planning to stay competitive as we transition through Governor Newsom's reopening strategy. In our Pulse survey, we asked health centers to share if they made modifications to their payroll. We learned that just under half, about 46% of health centers made no changes to base or variable pay, whereas 54% made some form of payroll adjustments. Changes made by remaining health centers included postpone, postponement of merit increases, temporary salary freezes, temporary increases such as premiums in base pay, such as hazard pay, and then elimination in merit increases. The health centers who offer hazard pay were also asked to identify how they structured their policy and which staff positions were eligible. These findings are included in the summary report. Prior to COVID-19, addressing physician burnout was a top priority for many health centers. We learned that the top three strategies health centers community health centers leverage when wanting to address physician burnout are providing flexible schedules for their clinicians, offering EHR trainings to provide improved proficiency, and establishing quality improvement projects for issues of importance to providers. CPCA uses reporting data to highlight the impact community health centers make on healthcare delivery. We recognize that when we measure data points, we bring about a sense of not only the challenges that health centers are facing, but we also are able to advocate. In 2019, more than 1,370 community health centers that provide com health centers, sorry. In 2019, more than 1,300 community health centers provided comprehensive quality high care to 7.2 million people. That's about one in six Californians. Our website provides infographics and data points similar to the ones I just shared on uh, and are available for anyone to download. With this in mind, we wanted to capture the impact community health centers have and are making from a training perspective. So we, because we recognize that the healthcare delivery at a health center requires a team approach, we are not surprised to see that health centers train not only physicians, but also nurse practitioners, physician's assistants, as well as allied health professionals and mid-level providers. So we asked health centers to share which disciplines they are investing energy and resources in, as well as the students or residents they train within each field. In our 2019 workforce development survey, primary care ranked first. 55 health centers reported to have trained primary care, primary care clinical students and or postgraduate residents. Behavioral health came in second. Meanwhile, allied health came in third. The bar graph provides the number of community health centers in aggregate. However, our report breaks each field down by clinical student or postgraduate resident. Throughout the report, you'll be able to get a sense of how many community health centers identified with having training efforts moving forward. In addition to medical, dental, and behavioral health services, a number of community health centers are providing enabling services that fill common gaps in the care delivery process. These important non-clinical services support the delivery of basic health services and facilities and facilitates access to comprehensive patient care. Enabling services include medical, <clears throat> excuse me, medical social services, health insurance eligibility determination, medication assistance, interpretation services, community health education, transportation assistance, outreach, and referral to community-based resources. 
Staff that typically fall under this category are community health workers, case managers, transportation staff, interpretation staff, eligibility assistance staff, and many more. We learned there's a growing interest in providing training and education to enabling services staff and asked health centers to share what topics they included in the training that they provide to their enabling service staff. Of those that participated and responded, cult cultural sensitivity, health promotion, care coordination system, effective communication, and advocacy and community building ranked among the top. CPCA conducts a wide range of programs and activities to support our core mission, including policy analysis and advocacy, consensus building, regional collaborations, education, outreach, research and analysis, and of course, training and technical assistance. We use our peer networks and committees to provide a form for collaboration, information sharing, and strategy development among health centers and consortia. To further strengthen our education, training, and technical assistance efforts to health centers and consortia partners, we included questions in our surveys that provide us with insight on the appetite that health centers have moving forward. As members of the older generation leave the workforce and the younger workforce begin to take leadership positions at health centers, part of the responsibility of their leadership development rests within the organization as a whole. Fostering future leaders from within will be crucial for maintaining a competitive advantage and ensuring success with retention. To no surprise, over 70% of community health centers express strong interest towards sending their staff to leadership development programs that build core leadership skills, teaches change management strategy and finance, and innovation experience. The top three considerations community health centers evaluate when sending staff are, one, whether or not the program is, provides community health center content or is relatable to community health center challenges and strategies, two, the cost of the program, and three, the delivery of the trainings. There is a preference for a combination of in-person and live remote trainings. As mentioned before, CPCA continues to look for meaningful ways to engage with community health centers around topics of greatest interest, as well as identify areas our state and regional partners can help with. With respect to residency training, prior to COVID-19, 20 community health centers were seeking to create a new partnership with external residency programs. 19 planned to sustain, plan to sustain the number of residents trained through their program, and another 19 were seeking to enhance their existing program through new partnerships with community-based organizations. In response to COVID-19, CPCA has rolled out education and engagement structures that have strengthened health centers. Specifically of note, CPCA closely communicates with CPCA committees, peer networks, both of which are comprised of community health centers throughout the state so that we can share information, add layers of visibility to regional and statewide issues, and of course, provide critical updates on responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. We have developed a number of COVID-19 specific webinars as they relate to different community health center operational needs such as telehealth and HR, and we'll continue to do so in response to specific community health center needs. At this time, all of these webinars are offered at no cost. And as you'll see on the screen, a list of available resources. All of these resources, such as educational guides, FAQs, and toolkits are accessible to health centers through CPCA's website at www.cpca.org. And lastly, you know, just recognizing that the goal of CPCA is to lead and position community clinics and uh, network through advocacy, education, provide services as key players in the healthcare delivery system so that we can improve the health status of our communities. Um, we as an association achieve these, this goal through current programs and activities that include dedicated advocacy, annual conference, topic specific conferences and events, training such as webinars, in-person in -person trainings prior to COVID-19, podcasts and webcasts, technical assistance, media and public relations, et cetera. These are all listed on the slide. This, uh, additionally, the slide maps out specific, or the slide calls out specific 
workforce resources available to health centers. These all include the Connected Communities Library, which we highly recommend health centers review and engage in as there is a library of resources for both workforce content, but also telehealth, emergency preparedness, leadership, and HRSA updates. CPCA, as Anne-Marie mentioned earlier, CPCA also provides a annual compensation and benefits survey, which we rely on to capture how health centers are staying competitive in today's market. In addition to the compensation and benefits survey, we also are seeking to continue launching our workforce development survey to further understand how community health centers are adjusting to the pandemic, as well as how they plan to move forward. Lastly, thank you. I just want to take a couple of minutes to thank you for joining us during our presentation. And I hope that you are able to uh, review the survey analysis, the summary report, as they are targeted and aimed at providing you with a useful tool for your teams. And with that, this concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for watching.